Vitiligo is a chronic condition in which areas of skin lose their normal pigment and become very pale, white or light pink. Now the amount of skin affected by vitiligo and the speed at which it spreads are unpredictable, varying from single small patches to a total loss of skin colour. Now in this video we're going to take a look at some potential treatment options for vitiligo, but before we do this let's first of all take a look at some photographs. So as you can see from these photos, vitiligo consists of irregularly shaped patches of skin that lack the normal melanin pigmentation. These are very pale pink or white patches. It's often symmetrical, affecting both sides of the body, but the skin otherwise feels entirely normal. The most common sites for vitiligo are the hands and face, around the body openings, so the eyes, nostrils, mouth, belly button and genital regions, and within body folds such as the underarms and groin. When hair bearing skin is involved, the hair might lose its pigment and appear white. So now that you're familiar with what vitiligo looks like, what are possible treatment options? Well, the treatment options that we're going to talk about now are hopefully going to give you a broad idea of the range of treatments that are available. And hopefully you can use this information to have an informed discussion with your healthcare professional. After talking to your healthcare professional, you might actually decide not to treat your vitiligo, but instead you might choose to protect your skin with sunscreens as well as find a good cover-up product for when you choose to use it. Now if you do decide to seek treatment, the following options are available. Firstly, sunscreens are an important treatment option because areas of vitiligo will burn easily in the sun. Now you should use a sunscreen with four star or five star UVA rating and SPF 50 and apply it to affected patches and surrounding skin before going outside in order to protect the skin. It's also important to take the other standard sun protection measures like wearing appropriate protective clothing and staying out of the sun at peak hours between 11am and 3pm. Now the second treatment option are topical corticosteroids. These are steroid creams that you can rub into the skin. Now the application of a potent or very potent corticosteroid anti-inflammatory cream or ointment to areas of vitiligo might restore some pigment, but this is not a long-term treatment option. And that's because of the side effects like thinning of the skin and stretch marks, which increase in risk with continued use, as well as a range of other negative side effects. The third treatment that's worth mentioning are calcineurin inhibitors. These are another type of anti-inflammatory cream and ointment, which may also return pigment in some people who've got vitiligo. Now this topical treatment can help avoid the corticosteroid side effects and skin thinning, and it might be especially useful for facial vitiligo. Now the other option is to alternate calcineurin inhibitors with a topical corticosteroid cream or ointment to avoid the skin thinning side effect of the topical corticosteroid on its own. Now short courses of oral steroids can also sometimes be considered if you've got rapidly spreading vitiligo. Now this treatment may be associated with a wide range of side effects, including but not limited to weight gain, skin thinning, mood changes, as well as cataract. The other option is phototherapy. This involves exposing affected skin to artificial UV light. Now phototherapy may be helpful in a proportion of patients with vitiligo. However, treatment often needs to be prolonged, comprising of hospital visits two to three times a week for several weeks, usually for at least 12 weeks, and in some cases up to a year. Now, before the start of phototherapy and during the course of treatment, medical photographs of your vitiligo are usually taken in order to monitor progress. Full repigmentation is unusual, and depigmentation, which is loss of color, again after the phototherapy can occur. Now, areas like the fingertips and feet are less likely to improve. Now, phototherapy may also be used in combination with topical or oral steroids or calcineurin inhibitors as a treatment program for you. The other option are psychological treatments. Now, professional help with developing coping mechanisms may be helpful for some people with vitiligo or their carers, for example, people's parents. Now, your doctor should direct you to self-help resources to support you as well. Now, if vitiligo is causing you severe distress, you might be offered referral to psychological services for individual or group talking therapy to help manage vitiligo. Finally, there are a number of options for covering up or blending in your patches. First, advice from experts about skin camouflage is available by referral through your dermatologist or online via the charity Changing Faces. There are also good quality camouflage products in a range of colours that are water resistant and less likely to rub off during the day or on your clothing. 
You might also find that some makeup brands identified as long-lasting or sunless tanning products can be useful for day-to-day -day use. Patient support groups can also help with a list of available products or members' personal recommendations. In addition to the treatment options that I've already mentioned, the following treatment options are not widely available here in the UK on the NHS, but a limited number of centres with specialist interest only might offer them. The first is surgical treatment. Now this process involves transplanting small areas of normal skin into areas of stable, which means unchanged for over a year of vitiligo. Now this method of treatment is not for general use and it's not routinely available on the NHS. The next option is CO2 laser and 5 fluorouracil cream. Now this combination can sometimes be used in adults on hands and feet only. The third option is eczema laser treatment. Now some areas of vitiligo have improved from treatment with a laser called the eczema laser. Now this treatment appears to work best on vitiligo that has not changed for a long time and affects relatively small areas of skin. Now laser treatment is usually used in combination with topical treatments. In most people vitiligo tends to change slowly with periods of stability often lasting several years. It's also important to note that repigmentation, so return of colour, is not guaranteed following treatment and the vitiligo may well return after treatment. Although treatment may be helpful in restoring your skin colour, it can't necessarily prevent its spread or recurrence, and repigmentation may not be permanent. I hope you found this video helpful and informative, and it hopefully offered you a range of options that you could consider for vitiligo treatment to at least arm you with the necessary information to take to your health provider so you can have an informed discussion. If you also want to share your own experiences with treatment for vitiligo in the comments section of this video, please do so. I'm sure this could be extremely useful for other people. Thanks for watching, and until next time, bye.